Welcome, everybody. This is the U.S. Grace Force Podcast. I'm Doug Barry, along with my very good friend, always amazing, Father Richard Heilman. And tonight we've got back with us Daniel O'Connor. And he's going to become a regular guest because we just really like what this guy talks about. So, Daniel, thanks for joining us. We appreciate you being back. Thanks for having me back. Great to be back. Thank you for having me. All right. This is a great title, Are Conspiracies and Prophecies Merging? And I think a lot of people are questioning that right now. We hear a lot in the secular news. We see a lot in the prophetic world. And a lot of things are happening and seem to be moving very quickly. So we always want to address these things with an attitude of hope. So, of course, everything should begin with prayer. And, Father, that is your department to lead it. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we want to thank everybody out there who supports the U.S. Grace Force podcast every week, every episode. I want to start off with thanking you from the bottom of our hearts, your prayers, your encouragement, your comments, those of you who support us through the Patreon program. All these are tremendously powerful pieces that help us get this message out and reach, by the grace of God and your help, a lot of people we hope and pray. If you're interested in supporting us through the Patreon program, please click the link in the description below. A lot of hands working together, even contributing just a little bit can go a long way and we can reach a lot of souls and a lot of lives that way. So just a few dollars every month is a big, big help to get this message out. So thank you so much for that. If you can support us through the Patreon program, don't forget to check out the U S grace force gear page link in the description, uh, fun, exciting, good messages, t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, the whole nine yards, good stuff to get out and wear that evangelization message out and about as we try to, again, help reach people in these times. So we thank you if you support us through the U.S. Grace Force gear page. And also don't forget to check out that great new YouTube channel, Always a Kid. My son is doing it with his family. It's a lot of fun, and it reminds us of the innocence that God calls us to have. If you wish to enter into the kingdom of heaven, you must be like a child. So we can't lose that innocence and that wonder and that excitement and joy of life. And that's what Always a Kid YouTube channel is all about. So please check it out. Link in the description below. Uh, let's get right into this now. Daniel, when I called you, we talked briefly earlier today about getting you on for this, the title, Conspiracies and Prophecies. Are they merging? This is something that, you know, a lot of the people who follow our Grace Force channel, and I think the people who follow a lot of your work, are paying attention to the signs of the times, in addition to knowing at least something about, if not, you know, people who study quite a bit, prophecies that are out there. And I know this is something mm -hmm. that you do quite a bit of work in. We really appreciate your perspective on this because you're not a prophecy chaser. You're not someone who just goes out and says, hey, this is exciting and dramatic. Let's make a big deal out of it. You're big on the importance of really discerning these things so that we do not find ourselves being misled uh, and getting off track when it comes to really obeying God and, and following the truth. So we appreciate you for that. Um, give us, a, again, a quick uh, explanation and then we're going to get right into something really, really serious and important, something you said right before we started recording. I'd like to ask you to repeat, but give us a little uh, synopsis again of why we should look at prophecy, why we should pay attention to it, and how we should be looking at it through what lens. Absolutely. Well, as Scripture says, test the spirits. Do not despise prophesying, but test the spirits and hold fast to what is good. Now, of course, as Catholics, we always obey the Church. You know, we wait if the Church uh, condemns something, we leave it aside. Even if those condemnations aren't infallible, there's grace in obeying the church. But still, we, we always accept that. But that, that, of course, leaves the question, what about all of those prophecies that the church has not yet approved or condemned? There's, so, there's, there's too many Catholics out there who will just say, oh, if it's not approved, goodbye, I don't care. Now, you, you can apply just some very basic logic to that to refute how absurd it is, because every single fully approved apparition was once just unapproved. You know, the, the 70 to 100,000 that showed up at Fatima for the miracle of the sun, they showed up for an unapproved apparition's miracle because our, because our Lady foretold it, and they heard the voice of heaven and what Our Lady was saying there at Fatima. The Church, in fact, will never even bother to give an investigation into an apparition unless there's sufficient uh, a following of the faithful already. So you've got to train your voice, to, sorry, train your ears to hear the voice of Jesus Christ through reading scripture every single day, uh, remaining, uh, having your life 
based on the sacraments, especially the mass, uh, regular confession as well. You, you train yourself to hear the voice of Jesus, and then you can hear him when he's speaking through his mother or even directly or through even a, some other saint in an apparition. So you don't trust your own judgment to be infallible. Of course not. But you've also got to listen for the voice of the spirit and despise not prophesying. You know, I was thinking, I think I mentioned this in our last uh, video, but I'll quickly mention it again. I was speaking to Immaculate Ilbegiza mm -hmm. a few months ago, and she was sharing. She's a Rwandan genocide survivor. I highly recommend her work. Hi highly recommend her work. But she was telling me about how in Rwanda there, before the genocide, Our Lady came, Our Lady of Kabeho came to warn of rivers of blood. And by the way, she also said this message is not just for Rwanda, it's for the whole world. She came to warn of rivers of blood and she asked us for prayer and repentance and uh, a number of other devotions. And people, and this is straight from the mouth of Immaculate, I'm relaying what she told me a few months ago at, at dinner. Um, she said, some people were listening to that and kind of thinking about it and think, okay, well, maybe this is true, but, you know, it's it's got to be like a couple hundred years out. Uh, it was a few years out. Mm -hmm. People didn't listen, and the Rwandan genocide happened. And then after the genocide happened, the thing Our Lady came to prevent, then it was approved. So, yes, we always trust that we always obey the church, but we don't necessarily wait for an official verdict. We listen to heaven. And we hold fast to what is good. And yes, that's going to mean leaving aside some things that are questionable, certainly leaving aside anything that's heretical. But we hold fast to what is good. And in terms of what is good now, we've got heaven sounding the alarm as never before, begging us to wake up. Yeah, and we, we were talking about this, uh, I think it was either the last podcast or the one before that, but when Our Lady does give these messages, the big word to look for is if. And so she's warning, mm -hmm. she's a... She's a mom that loves us, and she's holding the hand of her son, right? And why? Because, you know, God wants us in his uh, sacred heart. He wants, us, he wants us right. He wants us home. And, and he wants us to, to, to lead a good and holy life. Uh, to, to, as children of God, let's say we're champions for Christ. We're called to be that at least. But, but we wander, or, and, or we, and we... We go, uh, we're, we're, we're led in a, a direction we're not supposed to go, and the warnings then sound. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in our historical time, Our Lady, praise God, has been coming and saying, if my people, then, but to, to let us know that and it's like Rwanda, right? And the, the sounding the alarms is the way you put it, too. But, uh, Daniel, wait, right now, we're, we're in a historical moment, I think, that I, I think the alarm bells are going off like crazy. And it just feels like um, that there's something coming. And here we are in 2024. I know there's things in the culture like the election. Oh, my goodness. Because right now we're in a moment where people will do absolutely anything to get into power. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's even, you know, lie and cheat and steal and uh, anything, uh, and we don't need to go in that. And I don't want to get p political either. I'm just pointing out these are the times we're in right now, and and uh, so I think a lot of people right now are on edge and saying, "What should we do?" And Our Lady has been telling us, "Here's what you should do." So, what what are some of the prophecies, Daniel, uh, that particularly strike you in these times that 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 are sounding those alarm bells and, and, t and telling us, okay, this is what we need to do. If we do this, do what? Well, the amazing thing about, about the prophecies happening now, uh, being given now, is how much they parallel or even, even just expound upon what we already have in Scripture in the chief book of prophecy about the future, namely the book of Revelation. And I just want to want to emphasize one of the first verses in the book of Revelation. Chapter 1, verse 3, our Lord reveals to us, and he says, Blessed is he who reads aloud the words of the prophecy, and blessed are those who hear. He doesn't say, okay, here's a bunch of stuff for you to ignore and pretend is just a bunch of symbols and it's not actually going to happen. And he says, blessed are those who read aloud the words of the prophecy. And moving on, 
the clearest and the most succinct outline of what is coming in the book of Revelation. It happens in chapter 6 with the seals of Revelation. We've got the seven seals, and it's remarkable how we see the seven seals opening up before our eyes in what's happening in the news. I mean, you on any given day, whatever day you happen to be watching this, you could probably turn on the news right now and you'll see one of the seals of Revelation opening up. We, we, the, the seals of Revelation speak of hyperinflation, a cord of wheat. What was it? What's a cord of wheat for a denarius? In other words, barely enough to live on for a whole day's wages. That's hyperinflation there. We see um, another seal speaking about peace being taken from the earth men slaying one another. And we have the the recent prophecies throughout so many different seers. We'll have to go into more details on them in a future uh, podcast when I have more time to compile them all. But warning about, about this violence erupting, even on the streets, guerrilla warfare has become a frequent theme in recent uh, prophecies. And when, when, I, when I see those prophecies, I think about just violence erupting uh, almost randomly throughout the whole world. But then we also have the seals of Revelation speaking about this massive sword being given and this war exploding across the whole world. And if that doesn't make you think about nuclear war in World War III, I don't know what it does make you think about. We've got uh, famine and plague, all of these things. And you, it, it's this, you don't have to be a biblical scholar or something. Just open up your Bible to Revelation chapter 6, and you'll see this laid out in a few short paragraphs. Our Lord in public revelation gave us the framework of what we're experiencing happening right now. And we see the apparitions and the recent prophecies giving, uh, filling out those details of what's coming now. And as this uh, video's title says, we are seeing a striking parallel in even what secular conspiracies are starting to say, which are always mixed with plenty of error. If anything secular is going to be a mix of good and bad, as it always is. But, um, you know, it's becoming a, a saying, rightfully so, that uh, the conspiracy theories are just, you know, the news a few days ahead of time. And it's, you know, they are the the conspiracy theories are becoming the easiest way of actually knowing what's going to happen soon. And that's becoming increasingly true. You know, Dan, as you're talking about the, the, the guerrilla warfare on the streets, the violence, the uprising of violence and civil unrest, you know, this is the sort of stuff we've really seen escalating we go back to several you know several years when you had riots that had broken out 150 plus cities you know were set on fire and different things that were going on uh, really kind of shocking people that things could really erode like they did as quickly as they did in those violent times and i think it we'd be you know very foolish to imagine that this isn't still potentially there now combine that we talk about conspiracies and prophecies what we mean by conspiracies you know, for the audience here is we're not talking about conspiracy theories where people are talking about the craziest things that are just out there as urban legend type. We're talking about conspiracies, meaning when people get together and conspire for evil, destructive things to happen. Are these evil, destructive, conspiratorial things happening? And are they aligning with some of the prophecies? You mentioned the one about violence. I want to highlight to everybody that the Butler County, Ohio Sheriff Richard Jones recently spoke at the time we record this podcast, a press conference he gave after he had returned from a meeting in Washington, D.C. with several hundred sheriffs from around the United States. Now, there are about 3,300, if I'm not mistaken, sheriffs in the U.S. because there are about 3,300 counties and this county sheriff, and sheriffs are elected by people. They're not appointed by government. So it's a, it's a very important law enforcement position that affects everybody in the country on a very, very unique and personal level. It's a very, very important job. He gets back from this meeting that they had had with the head of the FBI and several other federal agencies. And he says in the press conference, I cannot tell you everything but I need to make the public aware of certain things. Now, I'm going to put a link in the description below to a video um, that is out of this. It's one version of the speech that he gave and another link to a video that I did, a short seven-minute video on my YouTube channel about this. Now, what he says in here is, we need to prepare now because the violence that took place in Israel, for example, on October 7th is very likely to come here. He says that all of the squad cars in his county now, all of the patrol cars, 
are going to have go bags. And he does say that term, go bags, which is an emergency bag. We talk about it in BRC, Be Ready Coalition, all the time. And they're going to have rifles with them. And they'll be having extra magazines, extra ammunition, in other words. And we are starting to train civilians, he said, on how to deal with certain crisis and disastrous situations. He said that five U.S. sheriffs went to Israel shortly after the Hamas attack on October 7th. And they were told by those in Israel that the same people that trained these Hamas terrorists to attack have also trained the mindset to hate America the same way. So this is not this is not something to take lightly. And when people talk about, you know, preparing on a natural level in some way, shape or form for some of these disasters, these prophecies and, and you you made that mention about Rwanda and that Our Lady said that this particular um, genocide, this this travesty, this chastisement was not just for Rwanda. We should emphasize that the violence and the upheaval that took place there, that could come to the entire world if, big if, everybody, we don't respond to the call for conversion. But Daniel, it doesn't look like we're really responding real well. And I'm not trying to be facetious here, but it, it, it just looks like a dangerous time. But when you see the Butler County Sheriff as one simple example of warning us of natural um, conspiring events that could take place, terrorist attack type things, cyber attacks against our power grid, against our water supply treatment companies. He says in the speech that even his sheriff's office, and this is in Ohio, so this is out there just north of Cincinnati, got it up here on a map on my other monitor, and, and he's got about 400,000 people, he says, in his county, and he said his particular sheriff's department was hit with a cyber attack, and they were back to using, everybody listen, they were using paper. The computers were gone for a while. They're doing everything on paper again. So the fact that cyber attacks, even on a county level, are taking place right now, these all these indicators, Daniel, seem to be kind of pointing to these this tragedy uh, that the prophecies speak of. And a lot of these prophecies, if I'm not mistaken, and maybe you can kind of expand on this for us, speak about not only civil unrest, but just chaos and the breakdown, really, the, the, the desperation, the, the fear, the discouragement. I mean, there's a lot that the human person is going to go through when these things happen. I can only imagine in Rwanda, that was 90 days and nearly a million people slaughtered and millions more just gravely injured and wounded and traumatized. You know, you had up to half a million or so women that were brutally raped. It was just a horrendously evil time. But can you speak a bit, Daniel, about these prophecies that refer to um, the violence, the upheaval, the human desperation? This is kind of part and parcel for a lot of the warnings that we're hearing. And I don't want to be doom and gloom for people, but but there really is a reality as to why we're being told over and over that we need to repent, we need to get strong, and as Father, you always say, get strong in the mighty power of God, but we also need to be smart and smart means apply skills and practical thinking of community and food and water and all those other things that even Joseph did in the Old Testament, okay, when mm -hmm. Pharaoh had the dream about the seven cows, seven fat skinny cows, and so forth. Daniel, your take on, again, the violence, the prophecies, and how the conspiring violence seems to be lining up with these prophecies of this civil upheaval and unrest. Yeah. Well, I'll have to have specific prophecies laid out in a future podcast but for now i'll just think about it think about logically you know you, we talked about the um you, you talked about the uh what was it called the cyber attack yeah and we've had a number of prophecies for example warn about a um this is different but it would result in the same thing a uh, solar flare for example or an emp just wiping out electrical grids now think logically about what would happen in in an unbelievably short amount of time if electrical grids were wiped out. So in a matter of hours, you've got people running out of gasoline, not able to drive anywhere. You've got people, uh, you, you can't contact anyone unless you happen to have multiple people with ham radios who know how to, who have those licenses or something. So you, you're going to have every society is so unbelievably delicate today. And we we've we don't understand you just think about how little you'd be able to do if you didn't have your GPS and your internet and your electricity, your refrigerator, your telephone. So just think about what would likely happen in a very short amount of time if people 
got to a point of desperation. You're probably not living in a neighborhood full of great saints who are going to respond yeah. uh, with, with great grace to uh, society collapsing. So yes, we need to be honest about what's coming. It's not going to be pretty. Now, the grace of God, where sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. We need to absolutely trust that the grace of God is going to be outpouring, but we need to seek that grace right now. We need to open our hearts to that grace right now, repentance and prayer especially. Evangelization, get as many other people as possible ready for what is coming. Mm -hmm. Soften their hearts to accept the divine mercy. And I also absolutely, I absolutely recommend also physical preparedness, as, as Doug was saying. That's, that's, I'm certainly, um, I'm, I'm probably not as, as good at it as you, Doug, but I'm certainly doing my part trying to, you know, trying to be physically prepared for what's coming as well. And I think especially fathers, you know, Doug mentioned Joseph. Think about Joseph, the Old Testament. He was told by God about what's coming. So what did he do? Say, oh, no, I'm, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not, yeah. you know, it's it's going to be all fine. No, he, he, he got ready in accordance with what he was shown. Now, we, you might not be directly receiving prophecies. I'm certainly not. But I'm keeping an eye on what heaven is saying to the seers, and I see what they're warning of, and I see that it's imminent. So if we're going to just pretend that um, none of that could possibly happen while we're alive, people just still, so many Catholics still have their head buried in the sand. And I've spoken recently about how it's like, it's almost like three strikes were out. You know, God gave us this huge wake-up call with the 2020 nonsense and the lockdowns and all that. And then he gave us another wake-up call when Russia invaded Ukraine. And then people woke up a bit for that, and then that dragged on for a bit, and then people forgot. And then he gave us another wake-up call in October of last year with the war in the Holy Land itself. And now even that has dragged on long enough that people have forgotten again. And mm -hmm. I think those were our—I I look at those as like our three warnings before the warning. Yep. And we failed those because we are not waking up. We are not repenting. And as long as there's still breath in our lungs, there's still time to change course. Of course absolutely. I will I will never give a defeatist message here. Please, there's we can still do so much to mitigate the chastisements, but it's coming. Something is coming, and you better be ready. You better get your soul ready, the, the souls of your family ready, and as many others as you can, because it's gonna be tough. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree with you more. And getting your soul ready, I want to pick up on that because here we are at the beginning of Lent, and uh, I've been doing this with my my congregations here. Is I've been talking about look how the Super Bowl <laughs> uh, landed just so close to Ash Wednesday. Well, what did that help us to understand? And I, I mentioned it earlier, but we're, but the the they worked hard to become champions. You know, and that's what really Lent is all about. I've been appealing to people. And in fact, I've been saying, you know, all my life, I first I was a football player back in the day. But but then when I went into, went, went to college, uh, I got my psychology degree because why? I wanted to help form us up, you know, to, to be the best version of ourselves and to not let uh, life's challenges, uh, you know, uh, destroy us or anything like that. But But in that sense, I was a coach. And then I went on to major seminary and I got my degree in spiritual formation and there again to be the best spiritual person you could possibly be what are the best practices of our faith and you can kind of see it in my tone right now it's kind of that I'm in the locker room and I'm talking to the team yeah, but that's where we are right now Daniel and Doug is is we're at a place right now where where we got weak okay we got incredibly weak and and you named it earlier too Daniel and I love it but you said that what does prayer do? It helps us to listen better to God. We get tuned in. I, I, I sometimes will say that about certain people. I'd say it about the both of you. You guys are tuned in, okay? But that's 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 the result of taking your prayer life seriously. And and this is what I'm this is where I'm going with this too is that I'm actually calling myself. I'm an early riser. I like to pray early in the morning. I I do study prayer. Uh, certainly prepare sermons, but but uh, that's my time. Before the phone rings, before people are needy, that's my time. You know what I added this year? The thing I detest the most in the world. I never wanted to do this, and I'm doing it. I'm on the treadmill. I'm getting on the treadmill, <laughs> but I'm I'm working at that. I've been lifting weights for years, but I it's boring is the thing. It's not as it's so challenging. It's just terribly boring. But I started my Lent doing that. And then I came to find out there's such a thing as what's called a 4 a.m. club. And it's just what I've, I've been talking about. I, I get up early 
and I do my what I need to get myself strong before I use that to help other people before they wake up, basically. But the point I'm trying to make here, Daniel, is I think this is a time, and I'm using the coach tone right now, this is the time that we are called to regain that strength once again. And if something comes, we can, and here, here's the scripture I've been leaning on a lot. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and find life burdensome, and you'll find rest for your souls. What, what are you talking about, Jesus? And then he goes on and he says, my yoke is easy, my burden light. Wait, easy? You know, well, the treadmill's not easy. Lifting weights isn't easy. Uh, studying and praying isn't easy. But you know what? When you're trying to be one of God's champions, your heart is pounding, and you want to do this thing. Do you see? That's the analogy I'm trying to draw, and I think the Super Bowl this year was a, a, a kind of a wink from God to say, it's kind of like that, my people, okay? We're in the locker room, uh, and 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 we're going to practice hard, and we're going to do drills, and we're going to do sprints, and, and, the, and the guys are in there going, yes! <laughs> to that, that's hard. No, it isn't. And then Jesus says in that same scripture passage, he says, Learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. You know, in the context of what I'm talking about, that what that is? Coachable. You're coachable. You're meek. You take, you take directions. They always use uh, the image of the wild horse that's trained to stop on a dime at the tap of the rider's seat. He's coachable. He's humble. He's not so full of himself that he can't be led. That's when we're starting to tune in to God and take his direction. I believe, Daniel, and this is the point I'm making in, in the concept of what we're talking about in this podcast, this is the time for us to get coachable. This is the time for us to train up and to uh, put our prideful, self-centered, self-indulging, you know, th that's what Lent is all about. You know, why do you make sacrifices? Why do you fast? Why do you abstain? Because you're so attached to the stuff that you can no longer be coached by God. You can no longer be led. And, and, and if we're going to head into something, if we're going to head into something, we better be leaders that know what God wants for all of us. Okay? We got to get connected again. That's what getting strong is all about. And yes, it's physical and spiritual. Because if I'm just sitting around and 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 I don't want to move, I don't want to want to. Well, I want I want my heart pounding. I want to get physically strong and and so that I can do the spiritual thing that God is asking us to do. But Daniel, I just feel like in so many ways we're asked to be prepared, and if we're not physically and spiritually strong, then we've leapfrogged over. Yeah. Get that go bag. Get that uh, extra, you know, Captain Crunch or whatever you need to store it up. You know, do all that. You got to do that, okay? But don't do it instead of getting yourself physically or spiritually strong. Daniel, can I can I get your response to that? Absolutely, Coach. I love so make yourself coach. We you know. I, I, I actually I'm got a nickname for myself. I'm Coach Padre now. Coach Padre. All right. Coach, Coach, so Coach Padre. Padre's reminded yeah. us to be coachable because, yes. and I, I like I, that humble. that analogy of, you know, I and I don't, I can't relate to this a huge amount because it's been a long time since I've had time to play sports, unfortunately. But, you know, thinking about an athlete in the, in the uh, locker room there getting a pep talk from the coach, what he's, what he's up against is going to be objectively extremely hard. And yet that's not what he's feeling because, right. he, because he's ex excited and inspired. Yes. And when, uh, what, what was it? Wasn't it St. Paul in scripture? He said, pray not for a lighter load, but stronger shoulders. Yep. Is, is that, am I quoting that? Is that, I feel like that's scripture, but it might yep. be, I mean, maybe, maybe that's something yep. else, but I, I think That'd that's a great scripture. meme at least. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it, it's true. Whether, whether it's some random quote right. I'm remembering or it's scripture, it's true. Right. So where we have this ability to shoulder an enormous burden with the grace of God, that objectively speaking would look like a huge cross, but because 
if we open ourselves up to God's grace, it won't feel like a huge cross. We'll actually right. want to carry it. We will want yes. to suffer with Christ. If yes. we become coachable, and, and when are you coached with the Word of God? You know, when you, and try, if you can go to Mass every day, that's yeah. when you're most best coached. Yep. And, and sit there, listen to the readings. And pr- don't, do, when you're listening to the readings, don't think, man, I know a lot of people who really need to hear that. Just, no, get, get coached yourself for exactly. when you're hearing these readings. And, and that's when you're going to be exhorted. And just today at Mass, I was, th- there's always going to be something that sticks out with you at the readings. And just today at Mass, at, at Daily Mass, what stuck out in me was actually the first um, the first reading from the Old Testament where God said, and you will, uh, I can't remember exactly, but the, the quote, it was, uh, and n- so he's talking about the commandments, but God also said, neither shall you stand by idly when your neighbor's life is in peril. Right. And that that's, uh, so it's, we have to, um, that's like one of the commandments. Don't be idle when someone else's life is in peril. And that's, of course, physical. If a car is off the road, don't just drive by. You know, if they're off the road in, in distress, uh, don't don't just drive by. Stop and help them. Yep. Uh, that's Yeah, that's everybody else is driving by. You'll, you'll find a thousand people drive by yep. before someone stops and helps. You know, I, just a few weeks ago, I stopped. Someone went off the road and all these people driving by. So I stopped and I tried to, they were fine. They just went off in the snow and I tried to push them out and I couldn't, but, but just the fact that I stopped, it, it gave them all this, this encouragement. I could tell but them when you're peace coachable, that someone, someone cared when you're coachable, when you're doing it God's way, when you're in the will of God, you can't not stop. You have to stop. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. But if you're not, yeah. if you're kind of in your selfish, you know, your own you know, desires and wants and, you know, it's uh, you can find a million reasons not to stop. You know, and mm-hmm. uh, and talk yourself out. Of, do you see what I'm saying? I mean, we mm-hmm. we're gonna we're prepare, we gotta prepare. Okay, we gotta be prepared for what's coming. And the best, the first um, thing we need to do is what we're talking about here: is make sure you're you you're, you're can be as strong as you can physically, so that you can stop and get out of your car and push someone in the snow. Okay, if you need if it's needed. Uh, but whatever it's needed for, so you have the physical, you know, heart pumping energy to want to do stuff for other pe- people instead of you know slovingly sitting around. But but that's the physical. But the spiritual is get get tuned in, get that prayer life going. And and the one I, that I advocate the most is uh, mental prayer. Is is take that time to just attune yourself. Get in conversation, get in relationship, build that love. Okay. The 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 memorized prayers of Rosie, all that stuff is is amazing and it pleases God to no end. He loves it. He shows us that he wants us to do that. So it's it's not an either or, but but don't exclude taking that private time to just be silent and just say and hear, say and hear. Uh, with God, and and uh, and that's one of the ways that we're going to get tuned in. We're going to understand more completely what God wants, and we're going to do it whenever we're asked like that, like the tap of the rider's heel that that, that horse stops at thirty miles an hour. You know, we're meeked. Yeah, we're coachable. Okay. Uh, Amen. Amen. Yeah. 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 That that prayer that you've got to talk to God every day. With, yes. from your heart, from your heart. And yes, yes. please say the rose every day. Please say the divine mercy chapel every day and, and many others. Yeah. But but yeah, speak to God. And and you can do this anytime, of course. But the, the best and most powerful time that I found to speak to God is when he's physically inside you. Yes. And he's physically inside you for 15 minutes after you receive communion. And I, I wish I, pre- I, I wish I prepared this, but I don't know who. So I, I know I read this recently. I don't remember what Pope said it, but one Pope, he wrote, like he said, don't immediately after you receive communion, don't right away go into all these memorized prayers. And he said, that's great. But, and I'm heavily paraphrasing here, but I promise you, I read it's from a Pope or magisterial document. He said, take that time to converse with our Lord, those 15 minutes. Don't immediately leave the church. Don't immediately, most importantly, don't immediately start talking to whoever other, your buddy there. Don't start chumming it up over whatever stupid thing just happened. No. You take that, those are the most precious moments of your entire life. When Jesus, body, blood, soul, and divinity is inside you, you can literally talk to him and he can't help but hear you because he's right, he, can, he always hears you, yes. But when he's physically inside you, the grace, the graces that will just pour into your soul, if you're open to them and, and as Father said, coachable, that's going to make you a saint in no time. 
if you just get open. So if you're if you're listening to this now thinking, oh my goodness, I'm a knucklehead. I'm a knucklehead too. I hope nothing I said a few minutes ago made you think I'm an example of something. I'm not. I'm a complete knucklehead. But I'm a knucklehead. You're a knucklehead like me. That's I'm a knucklehead. Such- so you see, it, but it takes yeah. no time. So I'm working on. So hopefully it'll take no time for me in moving forward. But if you're a knucklehead, you just you just speak from our Lord from the heart when He's inside you in the Eucharist. And if you're not in a state of grace, then get in a state of grace by going to yes. confession. And then you receive our Lord, talk to Him. You can become a saint in no time if if you're coachable, if you're open to His grace, if you're yeah. open to that grace. Meek and humble of heart is just a. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's a perfect analogy. Meek and humble, mm-hmm. coachable. You're coachable. Mm-hmm. So, Daniel, when we're talking about this title, are conspiracies and prophecies merging? I mean, one thing I'll say is what you both were just talking about, I agree 100%. And I simply want to say this to to the audience and to all of us to remember that the holier we are, the closer to God we become, the more tuned in to Christ we are, and the closer to our Blessed Mother we are, the greater chance we have of having that supernatural grace and strength and not break under the pressure of some cataclysmic or disastrous type event, whether it's a war or whether it's some sort of natural disaster that devastates through flood and famine. We know that the closer we are to God, the far less likely than we are to giving into desperation and doing horrible things in order to just survive. And this this case in point has been proven over and over. We will more easily know what God wants us to do like that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And we're far less likely to turn to to disastrous and destructive things just to just to eat. There are people I have heard say, you know, two particular cases. I wasn't directly, but one was through um, uh, my brother-in-law and another through my son. They heard men say to them directly, these were good men. They felt decent people. And they both said in these two separate cases, if there's a serious disaster and food and water cut short and all, I don't need to store any of that up. I have guns and ammunition. I'll get what I need when I need it. Yeah. Now these these are both two men who who in both cases I was told That's how they're justifying be, looters today because they don't have that's money it. They need to buy the food so yeah. they're buying so they need, it, so they, they need a plasma TV. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah right. Or some new shoes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, $500 tennis shoes. So I guess what I'm saying is this, this has been proven over and over that when we become godless or even just lukewarm yeah. and mediocre and then a disaster hits I mean, we're far more likely to give into desperate measures. So yep. I just want to emphasize what you both said. And absolutely, we have got to continue to strive for that closeness with God and adoration and communion, rosary, devotion to Mary, confession regularly. These are key pieces that we cannot in any way, um, you know, not take advantage of what we have them. We should be taking advantage now. But Daniel, I want to get to this then. Conspiracies and prophecies, are they merging? Give us, give us, a, a, give us a couple different um, examples of where you see conspiratorial things. And when again, when we say conspiracies, let's help the audience again understand. We're not talking about, you know, urban legend type myths that we heard from someone on some basement YouTube channel that this... We're talking about things that we are seeing or have evidence of that have been proven in one way, shape, or form have been a group of people who have conspired to do something that has been very destructive in some way. And look, the audience knows we could go back just several years and there are certain things in the medical world or in the legal world and current things right now, certain judges' decisions against certain political figures that are looking very conspiratorial. Okay, so we know those things happen. Give us a couple examples what you think conspiracy type things and how they're lining up with prophecies. Yeah, absolutely. And these conspiracies, look, they are happening. They've been happening for a long time, but they're reaching a head now. And just I'll, I'll quickly throw out there, remember that Freemasonry has been condemned by more church teachings than just about anything else. Like there's hundreds of separate acts of magisterium against Freemasonry. And suddenly we've got we've got clerics, bishops in Rome cozying up to it. I mean, there's this big me- meeting planned. I mean, it's it's diabolical. Now, that's what I'm just just to emphasize what Doug said there. By conspiracy, we don't mean Bigfoot or some crazy thing like that. We mean there are evil groups of men planning evil things. And yes, this is happening. The church teaching the magisterium for hundreds of years has been clear about this. These evil men are conspiring. But they know because the devil is leading them and he knows what's going on. He knows that he doesn't know the future, but he knows the prophecies. He knows they're accurate. He knows his time is short. So he's throwing a fit now. 
like never before. And he is moving all of his pieces together and they're converging. Now, a couple different things that the conspiracy has been talking about, in fact, accurately, but there's always error mixed in with secular conspiracy. So you got to go back to the authentic prophecies. But anyway, one of the biggest things, probably the biggest thing, in fact, the biggest dark cloud looming over society for what, 75 or so years now has been the um the prospect of another world war and because of what's you know because of advances in weaponry of course since then people have been in existential fear of this you know i teach um existentialism and comparative religion and other courses at the college i teach at but it's funny the text a couple of textbooks i use are were written in the 50s and they both refer to this like existential dread that society had about another world war just changing everything overnight. But that now is what we are facing. Because, and we see every single development since Russia invaded Ukraine, especially two years ago. People are, you know, World War III, it's trending overnight on all the social media things. And, and then people forget because people can only remember something that's popular on the news for a day. And, and then people forget. But I just want to ask, have we taken, have we retreated back? Have steps been taken back from this threshold of another world war since over two years ago? And the answer is, of course not. We have only inched closer and closer and closer to it with every passing event that has happened. And it was just on the news today, I think it was the first, um, I said, I mentioned Russia, Ukraine, but of course we've got the whole issue in the Holy Land now. These fires are merging into one big fire. We, we just had a the first, um, American servicemen killed a couple of weeks ago. We just in uh, in response to these this chaos going on in the Middle East, we just had the first British ship sank, I think, today or yesterday, as we're recording this from the Houthi rebels. So we're only seeing every step coming towards World War Three. And a number of prophecies have said, yeah, everything can be mitigated. As Father said earlier, this is always an if. Now, even if even if we know that certain things are hap going to happen from prophecy, even if those general events are going to happen. They can still be mitigated in their scope, severity, and duration by prayer and sacrifice. So never become a defeatist. Always understand that as long as something is in the future, it can still have its details changed. But if the prophecies are authentic that are speaking of this, and I think they are, I'm discerning a number of living seers, and I'm not claiming certainty in this, but I, I look at messages to uh, Gisela Cardi and Luz de Maria and even Father Michel. You know, I kind of, I'm no longer, you know, there's a whole backstory there, but I'm not against him at all. And he, so he, his uh, messages speak of this uh, and, and a, a number of others as well, all kind of in agreement that, yeah, we're facing a third world war now. And there's a couple of people who think that that can't happen because of something that was said at Medjugorje or Garabandel. That's a misunderstanding. I do believe in Medjugorje and Garabandel, but that's a misinterpretation of what Our Lady said there. I put up a YouTube video on this a year or two ago, and I've, I've received more information since then. Uh, Father Alar, he was on your channel recently, a friend of mine. He put up a video recently about um, Our Lady approved apparitions at, at Coppa. Uh, am I saying the right? Coppa? About Coppa, the, uh, yeah. World Coppa Nicaragua. Ooh, Coppa. Yeah. Coppa, yeah. So we've got a lot of prophecy saying, yeah, this is coming. And I think we would be very foolish to pretend that it's not. Now, the free mate, what's the what's this motto of Freemasonry? Order from chaos. What would introduce more chaos than anything else you could imagine? A third world war. So we we can expect that the elite who are kind of pulling the strings behind the scenes, they're trying to lead us towards this. And this chaos of this this specter of a third world war, this is going to be this is going to give them, this is going to be the theater of the introduction of what the book of Revelation speaks of with these great trials, I believe, with the Antichrist and the Mark of the Beast. Yeah. But that's yeah. a mouthful right there. Yeah. Daniel, I don't know if you wanted me to go into all that. Yeah. <laughs> Daniel, when you boil it all down, isn't it? I, I mean, I, the priest, we read the breviary every morning. So we're reading the Psalms and, and that, and, you know, over and over and over throughout the Psalms and throughout the Bible, too, it's free us from our oppressors. From the tyrants you know it's it's all about that it's 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 uh you know this even even the the prayer of the blessed mother was 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 the same but but the point is is that cast down that, the mighty yeah. what's it? yeah cast down the mighties from the floor the um the magnificat right uh you know uh so so um this is and yet and and help me understand this and correct me if i'm wrong 
But anybody who speaks up against the tyranny of our time, the ruling class, the new world order, whatever you want to call them, the elites, right, that are activating this chaos, you know, open the borders, crash the economy, world war, whatever they can do to what? To make us their beggars. That's mm -hmm. what's going on. And even me, I got my public disciplinary action because I took issue with these, these tyrants who were putting uh, moms and dads in prison you know, to, 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 uh, to show others, you better not or else, okay? Unjust imprisonment. And I took ish, Doug and I had a, a podcast, and the and and the ruling class went crazy, okay? Because we shined a light on these oppressors, and we we knew what they were doing. And that's and I if, if you look at all the cancellation and everything that's going on, it's spiritual leaders who are saying no, no to this. Do not let these oppressors establish new normals and to tell you what to do. You're to do what God wants you to do, not what these oppressors are trying to indoctrinate you into doing or believing. One of the things that I've been preaching on lately is the, the way they're indoctrinating us is to be offended by strength. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we, we got to we got to uh, defund the police and the military is awful and and toxic masculinity and, and and the devil hates strength the devil hates strength you know go ahead and be a lukewarm catholic or do go ahead and uh, and be a you know sh a showy uh, see my religion catholic that's fine the devil likes it. in fact he loves that that's is showing people how to be a bad catholic but if you're strong if you're if you're doing it god's way if you're standing up against the oppressors of your time and calling them out, like Jesus did, you you snakes, you brood of vipers, right? Uh, you don't be like these these guys. Jesus would say over and over. Uh, but D Daniel, d is, don't you is that what you're seeing too? Is that especially the ones that are being attacked, canceled, whatever you want to call, are the ones that are courageous enough to say no? to this new world order this inflicting of chaos and 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 uh, absolutely and, and, and look at who's being persecuted to make us are their beggars right yeah look at who's being persecuted and follow them because if you're not getting persecuted at right. all today you're doing something wrong right. i mean look at the shepherds you you need to choose you our lady of akita spoke of cardinal versus cardinal bishop versus bishop yep. and that that wasn't a call to throw up your hand and say okay i guess i give up i guess i can't figure anything out no i believe that was a call from our lady to discern which shepherds are the good shepherds and which are the bad shepherds who are the hirelings who will not lay down their lives for the sheep, the ones right. who just want a promotion and who just want to make their way up the ladder. Right. Look at look at the ones who've been persecuted. Play we got game. Bishop Strickland. We got Cardinal Seurat. We got Cardinal Burke. We got Cardinal Mueller. All yep. of them have in some way, shape or form been persecuted. They are the shepherds who are leading you today. And guess what? They are all in agreement on every, basically every important thing that's been happening. With yep. the chaos in the Vatican, they're all on the same side with every single issue that comes. Back in the 2020 nonsense, which I can't even say the names of because this video will get deleted, but you know what I'm talking about. Sure. We had Cardinal Seurat. This was his pinned tweet on Twitter. I remember this so well. For like two years, the whole chaos, his pinned tweet was, no one can tell a priest not to administer the, sac uh, not to administer the sacraments. No one. These are the good shepherds who have shown themselves, who have proven themselves. And that I've been emphasizing this for a long time because it's so important that you know who to trust in these days. And I'm not yes. saying me. I'm saying stick with the good shepherds who've already proven yes. themselves. That's yes. become superlatively important in the last couple of months. It's going to be even more important in the months ahead. And just, just a couple of days ago, the Vatican released this document. It was called Towards, 20, uh, Towards October 2024. That was the name of it. And it was just, it was not very important. It was just given the dates for the conclusion of the synod. And um, this will have to be for another podcast, I guess. But just beware of what's going on there. All the recent seers, and it's, it's startling how many different seers who don't even know each other with different languages, different countries, they're all getting these messages from Our Lady, warning us, stick 
with the true magisterium. They now, keep using these words, true magisterium. On that point, though, Daniel, there, there's something about the prophecies of a great apostasy. And we mm -hmm. see these sorts of things happening. And, you know, we've always been very careful on this on this uh, podcast not to directly attack, you know, named, you know, clerics or Vatican officials and so forth. And that's not our intention here. But there are things coming out that at the very least, and Father and I are very open to say this, are confusing and appear divisive. And, you know, when good men that are, you know, clerics, church officials to, you know, priests, bishops are being silenced and are being um, reprimanded, as Father Heilman has been, in fact, and in such, we see what happened recently with Bishop Strickland. I mean, I'm in the Tyler Diocese. And at the end of every Mass, you know, we're hearing, okay, we're going to say this prayer now. Uh, prayer cards have been put in all the pews for a for the installation of the new bishop, whoever that will be. And I'm sitting there thinking the whole time, you just kicked out a great one. You know, yeah. this is it's really difficult, okay? But mm. there are prophecies of apostasy and such and the Antichrist and the mark of the beast. And I do want you to get into that a little bit about some of these areas, because these are prophecies that also seem to be lining up with some of the conspiring individuals, the conspiracies that are yeah. out there. What can you say about some of that? Antichrist, yeah, mark of the beast. Let's oof. get into some of that a little bit at the end here. All right. Buckle your seatbelts. You got a few hours. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I guess I, guess I got to make it quick, don't I? I don't know how much time we have. But, no, we, we've got um, about we got about 10 to 15 minutes at least. Here. 10 to 15? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it's so yes, the, the great apostasy is it, right there in scripture and it's throughout all of the authentic private revelations that are spoken of the times that are coming. So if you're going to just pretend that you can just, and there's there's some people saying this now, oh, just turn off your brain and just blindly believe anything that comes out of the Vatican. You might, you might as well just sign your death wish right there because Jesus said to Peter, you are Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not, be, shall not prevail against it. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. So that's the promise of Christ. That's irrevocable. That's absolute. But Jesus didn't tell Peter, okay, so there's going to be this city-state within Rome. It's going to be called the Vatican. You're going to have a bunch of clerics working for it. And you're going to have a bunch of dicasteries. And every, every single clergyman who works for every dicastery, everything he says is going to be God's truth. No, that's not what he said. He said he, he gave his promise to what Peter binds. And unless Peter has bound something, you know, back in the day, you could just turn, you could basically just trust anything that came out of the Vatican. We're not in those days anymore. So you better be careful because the devil has his sights set on the Vatican more than anything else. And you are going to see the great apostasy come from the Vatican itself and the great deception come from the Vatican itself. It couldn't be any other way if scripture is true and if all the prophecies are true. Jesus didn't say anything about Rome. He said something about the, about Peter. It, it, there's even precedent for this. You know, there, there were times in the Middle Ages where the papacy was not in Rome. It was in Avignon. So you got to stick with what Peter binds, and you got to understand that not everything that comes out of Rome, out of the Vatican, is necessarily going to be the Word of God. You're going to have even more deception coming out of there than there already has been, and there has been a lot coming out already. And I don't want to put anything in, in Doug or Father's mouth here. This is just me saying this. So just be careful about um what's coming there. I'm not I'm not at all saying rebel against the Pope. No, I'm not saying that. And don't I'm not saying reject his encyclicals or anything like that. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying be careful. Be on guard. Keep oil in your lamps. Okay. So the great apostasy is coming. We know that, but we also know that this great chastisement is coming. So we talked about World War III how more and more prophecies seem to be seem to be indicating that it's coming. But the other uh, specter here is this mark of the beast and this chastisement of the Antichrist himself and the false prophet. Now, when you, and I don't have the uh, quote from Revelation itself here in front of me, so let's go from memory, but and, and you all know it, I'm sure, about this prophecy of the mark of the beast where its number will be 666 and how... Only those who have this mark will be able to buy or sell. And we have a number of prophecies recently that spoken about this mark and have even referred to a chip in the hand. Now, what do we have in the conspiracy circles? You know, we're talking about the merging of conspiracy and prophecy here. Well, we've got a bunch of fully valid conspiracies that for years have warned us that they are going to try to turn all of our currency into a digital thing so that we actually can't use cash anymore or, or anything traditional, but that all of our transactions have to be administered through this digital marketplace. Now, that was conspiracy a couple years ago, a few years ago, maybe. Now, 
if you check the news and you just search for this, you'll be seeing it happening in country after country after country. This is becoming reality. Now, they're going to say, and they are saying, oh, it's optional. You don't have to use the central bank digital currency. You can still use cash. You know how long it'll be optional? About as long as the, you know, the you know what's were optional a few years ago. They're, they'll, they're going to find a way to make it mandatory. And I speculate that the way that they're going to find a way to make it mandatory is through the very thing that, that the WEF announced subtly a couple of years ago a cyber attack with quote covid like characteristics there's going to be a big false flag psyop cyber attack and it's going to be all planned it's the, the elites are going to be behind this whole thing i spec i'm speculating here that's going to be their excuse they might even blame it on sentient ai which is a complete deception i've written about a lot about that along with the ufo nonsense but they might even blame it on AI, but they'll say that the only way that we can institute a security measure to circumvent this great cyber attack that wiped everything out was is through a chip in the hand, in the right hand. And that's the only way we can actually biometrically verify that it's you. And that, I believe, will be the way they introduce the Mark of the Beast itself. Daniel, uh, you, well, go ahead, Doug. No, I'll just do a quick follow-up on that. I've got, I was over here on the other monitor pulling up. There is a video out from a woman, and you have to forgive me, I can't find her name off the top of my head, but she is very much in the same position as a, of uh, our Secretary of Treasury over here. And um, it's a video, it's a two and a half minute video on the Euro digital dollar. And she says in the video um, that you will have the option of cash or digital dollar. It's gonna be perfectly fine, which of course is a nice simple way of saying to people that, oh, you have that option. But as you mentioned, they can they can really push that to the point where it's not so easily optional. You know, that, that option can be taken away pretty simply. Uh, and with a cyber attack of some sort, yeah, you could see that sort of thing happening. And we know cyber attacks are happening all over the place. As we mentioned at the beginning of the episode, uh, the Butler County Sheriff talked about this is going on in, in even his sheriff's department in Butler County in Ohio. So we know these things are definitely doable. AI is, throw that into the mix and that can become, you know, another gravity of headache there. But she says in the video, yes, the Euro digital dollar is happening. And the idea of it happening in the US is very much Canada, very much. These are all on the horizon. And I see what you're saying about this, uh, Daniel, that this could very easily become a manipulative device uh, and, and the warnings have been, and they've made it clear at the World Economic Forum and such that this is a way of keeping perfect transaction of every, perfect record, I should say, of every transaction that everybody on the planet makes. That's what they're aiming for. They yeah. themselves say that. So this isn't even a conspiracy theory. They're conspiring openly about something that could very easily lead to this prophecy, like you're saying. So I... I wanted yeah. to just throw that out there, let the audience know that the video is already out there. Videos are out there of these individuals saying this is what they're planning is basically cashless society. Yeah, we're not speculating anymore. It was, it was conspiracy and speculation a few years ago. Now they are actually doing it. I mean, there's no debate. They are doing it right now. I think it was India that just India is like way far advanced in this. Like they're going to be CBDC in no time. Mm. Um, and I'm sorry, my screen froze for a minute there. So I missed a couple of things. That I, don't, I hope I've been coming through OK now. But um, when they when they can control transactions, they can control you. They don't need to go through all the, the quote, red tape and, and everything to make new laws to, to institute their persecution. They can just decide with the click of a button, literally one man in a dark room somewhere or one board with a click of a button, they can just change what you're able to do and what you're not able to do in a moment by in, by declaring what you're able to buy and what you're not able to buy based on your social credit score, based on whatever else. If you can only buy or sell with this central bank digital currency, even, even through a chip in your hand, perhaps, they have just overnight completely controlled the world. And I believe that's why they're also trying to make you so dependent on everything. They want to make sure that you uh, have absolutely no independence, even with heating your house. I think that's part of this whole zero carbon. I think this is all a tyranny. This is just another preparation, I think, in this infrastructure of the Antichrist that they've been laying down for a few years now. Yeah. If you can't, they, they want everything electric. They want your cars electric. They want your heat electric. They want your cooking electric. Why? Because those are all necessities. And electric, what can they do with that? They can turn it off. Yeah. And they can turn it on. 
whenever they want with a click of a button. And I think, Daniel, the reason we're talking about this right now, and I think, oh, let's call it five years ago, we we would be in conspiracy nuts. But look what's happened in the last five years. Hmm. And people are starting to lean in and go, okay, I get it now. I understand what what these, again, whatever you want to call them, ruling class, new world order, whatever it is, what they're up to. And, and and I think the bigger reason we need to talk about this is is so that we can be on to them, okay, that they don't catch us by surprise, and even better yet, that we don't allow it, right? We don't allow it. Mm-hmm. But we can't do that if we're not strong, okay? Right. If we're self-indulgent, you know, sit around, do nothing, you know, feed the flesh, uh, we're easy pickings, you know? So we need to be tuned into this kind, this kind of understanding – but we need to be tuned into God. We need to be tuned into what God wants us to do in this moment. Uh, how do we prevent this? How do we mitigate this, that, that, that this is coming? And I think that's what all the prophecies have, have been pointing us to all along, isn't it? If my people do not fill in the blank, uh, uh, then this this will happen. But I think, isn't it all, uh, and again, I'd like your, your opinion on this, you know, we would be crazy people maybe five years ago talking about this stuff, but but look what's happened in the last five years. Hmm. What, what hmm. do you think about that, Daniel? And and yet some people, even after we've been given all these warnings from God, not only in the apparitions and, and, and the prophecies, but in what's actually been happening for the last right. four years now, some people are still burying their heads so far in the sand and they'll take any opportunity they can to say, oh, those crazy people with their conspiracy theories. Right. And, um, you know, the, even Catholics, even these modernist Catholics who just, they just despise any notion of prophecy and they will just ridicule you and label you as as crazy. And and I've seen it, you know, all, all, all three of us, we were, we're used to being ridiculed for this. They're going to run out of chances soon. And I say this out of love, please wake up because God is going to bring you to your knees soon. And he's going to give you a chance to realize that you've been putting your faith in man instead of in God. Even if it's a man in a collar somewhere in the Vatican, you've been putting your faith in him instead of in God. And Our Lady is giving us as many chances as she possibly can. As We're hanging by a thread. Mm. And I don't know how much longer that thread is going to last, but we're hanging by a thread right now. So she's begging us through these messages to wake up while there's still time. So please listen. Please wake up while you still can, while, while you still can. Lent is the perfect time to do so. Yeah, that's Repent a, that's and believe in the gospel. Perfect yeah. way for us to end tonight. Yeah. Daniel, please, 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 can you come back uh, in the not-too-distant future and Let's dissect some of these prophecies uh, in more detail. I think yeah. that'd be amazing. I would love to. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Anytime. Awesome. awesome. Yeah, because we want to we want to be alert. We want to be strong. And we don't want to be taken by surprise. And we want to know what God wants to do in our lives. And so I'm encouraging people, you know, I, this is what I'm doing. I'm, I'm calling the 4 a.m. club. You can look that up online. It's actually a thing. But but uh I should try, join try get up in the morning. I'm gonna go to bed right after the podcast or right after recording. But uh but try to get up early in the morning before you have to attend to your family and your job and all that stuff and spend some time with the Lord and maybe even get to the gym for a little while. So, oh, amen. Mm-hmm. All right. In the amen. name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Come, amen. Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them yeah. the fire of your love. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah.